I'm Kerry Fink, and welcome to today's edition of Kingdom Living with Glenn Reppel. Boy, uh, I would say buckle your seatbelts, get ready. We are going for a great excursion today, Glenn. How are you? <laughs> uh, hey, th thank you. And and again, you know, Kerry, what an honor it is, uh, is that, and, and a privilege to just speak God's word is, and it's just so... It, uh, people listening and watching and, and being a part of it, and as you indicated, we're up to almost a million people uh, watching and, and hearing and listening, being impacted uh, by, by the teachings. But one of the things that, that the Lord really put in my heart uh, this week is just, I get more out of this than they ever can get out of it because because just just the preparation, just being in the Word of God, and as the revelation comes in, I'm going, okay, how can I get this out there to the to the people? So, uh, uh, what an honor it is to just be sharing God's Word uh, around the world. Yeah, you know, I was going to say that's really the advantage we have in this time and day of um, making available uh, this messaging worldwide uh, because of the internet. You know, we're, we are impacting people that we will never get an opportunity to meet on, on this side of it, just because uh, people are in different time zones or different lands. And, uh, but it's really encouraging to see the feedback and the number of people in the audience that just, just is growing because it shows a hunger for God's word. And as we were talking about, a lot of times, uh, you know, there's some naysayers that say, uh, you know, maybe Christianity is is being diminished and things like that. I don't see evidence of that when I look at the response mm -hmm. to uh, to the teaching messages that uh, are coming out of the kingdom living. It seems like it's going the exact opposite. People are getting on fire and they're getting a real revelation of um, who God created them to be anyway. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. It's, yep. it's, it's, it's so true. Yeah. And again, as you were talking before we came on, it's just uh, the teaching on victorious living is, is that because uh, we're going to be putting a fraud fire extinguisher on some ideas here that that we need to do that. And so uh, uh, because we've got to change our thinking because we've been brought up as we've done in past past sessions uh, about just that religious, that religious mindset, and we got to be freed from that uh, into the kingdom of, of God type of mindset. Yeah, you know, the way you're saying it, I, you know, we've talked about this on some of the previous programs, and again, if you're new to this uh, viewer, uh, whether you're catching it as a podcast, or you're seeing us on YouTube, or Facebook, or however you're accessing this, you know, there's a whole uh, library of Kingdom Living teachings that uh, Glenn has done in these podcasts, and of course, the REPL Minute, the daily Monday through Friday uh, messaging, and also uh, all of this is basically coming as an offshoot, Glenn, since you've been doing REPL Minute since 2006, but also a number of years ago, you wrote this book, Fraud, What God Has to Say About Tactics of the Enemy, and this is really was the impetus for getting the Kingdom Living um, discussion going, because so often the enemy is trying to, quote, put you in, quote, put you in your place. And yet that's his definition of what your place is. And what we want to do is look at what God's definition is of your place. And that's why I'm so excited about us getting into today's message, because I think it's going to it's going to shine a whole light on on that, that the darkness cannot comprehend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that is so good, Carrie. Uh, and, and thank you, Carrie. Uh, what, what a pleasure it is to just work with you over these years. And uh, what an impact uh, to have somebody of like mindedness just uh, thinking and growing and, and just speaking this way. So, so here's a question is uh, who is victorious over the world? And who are the world conquerors? Uh, really good questions. And, and then here's another one uh, is what gives the greatest freedom? Where, where do we get the greatest freedom? Political freedom, financial freedom, freedom from discomfort by having more pleasure, or freedom, look at this one, freedom from sin consciousness. How about that one? That's There's some freedom there. We, just, we, we really want to uh, uh, learn and speak a little more about that. So today, we're going to be putting the fraud fire extinguisher on, on Satan's dominion has been broken. And Jesus, Jesus is Lord has, has come. It's now, it's, we've got it now. And so, so it's important that we, we grasp this, this idea that, that uh, Lordship has begun now. We have it now. And who is he working through? He's working through 
his sons, his daughters, his children, his family. And again, this scripture we've talked about, but it, it's really important because this gets into green line, red line living. But in Colossians 1 verse 13, he rescued us from the dominion of darkness. And we need to understand what the dominion of darkness is. And we're going to get into a little more. The sense rule, ruled world dominated by the law of performance and relook. So, so he's rescued us from the dominion of darkness and relocated us into the kingdom where the love of his son rules and reigns. So we, we need to see that. So, we, so we're receiving the love of God through the son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit living inside of us. So he's rescued us out of this darkness. So we, as we, we usually start, we, we, we go back through and just, because we've got to get these areas of our life in order and understand some great events that have happened in, uh, in history, but but because because what happens, God is a God that is, was, and is to, is is to come. So all of this is a time. See, God's outside of time, and so many times uh, people are are preaching and teaching about the future, but the future's already happened because <laughs> God's outside of time. This green line here is the idea that's. That's, that's the eternal line. That was the destiny. That was the purpose that God had for mankind. So we talk about the three greatest historical events that have ever, ever happened. And the first one was creation. God created the heavens and the earth. And he made, Carrie, you and I and the people listening, in his image and likeness. We're made in the image of love. We're made in the image. We're spirit beings made in his image and likeness. And, and so we're created like God. And we've got this human being. So he needed a body uh, to bring the kingdom of, of, of heaven to earth so that the kingdom of God, so man could rule here on earth. So we needed a body here. So we're spirit beings with a soul and a body to rule and reign here on earth. But so the first greatest historical event was creation. The second, which we, we, we don't like to, to talk about it a whole lot, but what happened to, to Adam and Eve? Well, there were two trees in the garden there, and one is the tree of life, uh, which is in the center of the, uh, center of the garden. The other was uh, the tree of good and evil. And when you eat from that tree, uh, death will come. So it was never God's intended purpose for man to die. But when you eat of this tree, you die spiritually, you die physically. And he's given us this great body with divine health uh, to, that regenerates. And, so, and, and so, so the second historical event was the fall, the rebellion against God, the disobedience against God, uh, the treasonous act of not listening and following. Well, uh, they, they were disobedient, didn't follow God's instruction. Either the tree, you die. And so that's when sickness and death and disease and selfishness, and, 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 and we're going to look at this a little more uh, in, 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 as we go on today. So that's the fall. We're born into uh, the kingdom of darkness. That's what we come into. But thanks be to God that loved us so much that he knew before the creation of the, of the, of the world that this would happen. And he knew that he'd have to come in. And, and the third greatest event is redemption, the recreation uh, of man. And we're recreated back into that image and likeness through Jesus Christ. Uh, God's love through Jesus Christ redeemed mankind back to the image and likeness of God with, with the divine nature of God living in us with the Holy Spirit. So Jesus came to earth as a body. Uh, he he uh, uh, redeemed man. He defeated uh, Satan, uh, rose again, the resurrected Christ, and, and, and went into the heavenly and is sit, seating there now. See, the, the heavens open, and he had to leave so that the Holy Spirit could come in and live inside a man. So we have the divine nature of God, the Holy Spirit. We have God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit living inside a man. We've been recreated. And so we receive Christ. We become born again. The Spirit comes in. And then much like in Pentecost, we ask for that Holy Spirit to come in. And that's what gives us the power uh, of, of daily living. 
And it's through the Holy Spirit that we reveal, he reveals, he reveals his revelation. And one of the things that, that God's showing me, and, and we're going to be talking about this uh, a little more in today's teaching also, is how God's love is an increasing revelation that he keeps showing us. It's a progressive revelation as we understand who, who Christ is, who we are will also be revealed. And that's understanding how much God loves us through Jesus Christ and understanding that love because God's love is so different than the world's love. And so we've got to really understand uh, what that is, what that's like. So one of the things here is, is, is uh, in the, the question here, <laughs> I, I like this question. What's the most awful disease ever? <laughs> What's the most awful disease ever? So let's look at this. So the most awful disease ever is the dominion of the kingdom of darkness. Uh, the, king, the dominion is having a sin consciousness, which is guilt, shame, and condemnation, which is the world's culture, okay? That's a disease. That's a sickness that comes in from the fallen world. The dominion of darkness is having a sin consciousness. And again, Kerry, as we we're talking before we came on, uh, just the idea that what we talk about here is victory. The victory we have through the resurrected Christ uh, and the Holy Spirit living inside us. We have that victory now, not later, not into the future, not when we get to heaven. We get this now. So the whole idea is we have dominion over darkness. It's having uh, a sin consciousness of guilt, shame, condemnation in the world's culture. So we have to realize uh, the scripture over here is Colossians 1.13. He rescued us from the dominion of darkness, the sense world, world dominated by the law of profane, and relocated us in the kingdom. So let's look at some of the symptoms that we have of, of, uh, of the world's culture. So the world's culture uh, that's out there and just speaking to us in a, in a spiritual way is filled with fear, it's worry, jealousy, rejection, heaviness, uh, the spirit of anxiety, uh, the spirit of insecurity, I'm not good enough, hopelessness, uh, loneliness, despair, inferiority complex, insecurity, lack, not loved, and not good enough. These are, this is the sin consciousness of the world's culture that's just speaking into us. We see this in the movies. We see it in, in, into the music that, that, that's out there. Uh, we see it in the news. Uh, and, and again, this, this is the dominion of darkness that we're coming out of. And that's why God redeemed us. That's why Jesus came and redeemed us out of this kingdom of darkness. So what we have, and again, this is the Lord's prayer that, that we've talked about before, is, is that in the Lord's prayer, uh, what we, we read is, is that manifest your kingdom realm and cause your every purpose to be filled on earth just as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So that's the realm of bringing the kingdom to earth. And it's the manifestations of sons and daughters that Jesus's lordship has begun. And that happened through the redeemed Christ, went through the resurrected Christ with the Holy Spirit coming to live the divine nature uh, of God to live inside a man. So, and, and again, in Romans 8, 19, the entire universe, the universe, the cosmos is standing on tiptoe yearning for us, man, sons, sons and citizens of the kingdom of, of the unveiling of God's glorious sons and daughters to rule and reign now, not in the future, now. That happened 2,000 years ago. Jesus' lordship has begun. It started 2,000 years ago. We're, we're just now revealing and getting it. So let, let, let's look at this scripture here. In this first John 4, verse 4. Little children, you can be certain that you belong to God. And look at this. You have conquered them. So what's the them? You've conquered them. For the one who's living in you, in us, is far greater than the one who's in the world. <clears throat> so let's look at the footnote here. 
the footnote on First John four four in the Passion translation talks about that th that them the them there is the Antichrist who deny that Jesus is Lord is the Christ the Messiah and that that went on before Christ happened that was prophetically that Jesus was going to come and people denied when Jesus was even on earth they denied that he was the Christ they crucified him. So people are still denying that Jesus is the Christ, the deliverer, the redeemer. <clears throat> and that is the devil. We have the, we as believers have the word of God. We have the Holy Spirit. We have the favor of God and Jesus Christ. Within us, within us is more than enough power to overcome the evil in this world. There's a footnote. Now look at that. Within us is more than enough power to overcome the evil in this world. Now, what was the evil? That was that list of, of the of, 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 of those the, the kingdom of darkness we went through before. John uses the word cosmos more than any other New Testament writer 104 times to convey, to convey the concept of this world system or world order. One could describe it as the culture of of this world. So that's what Jesus came to overcome, and he's overcome it, and we have conquered it also. So we need to understand that we have conquered this through the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. We don't have to succumb to the culture of this world, the ways of the world, of the fear, the anxiety, uh, the, 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 the death that's being spoken of, the sickness and disease. Uh, that 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 comes in so much. Now, this is is the scripture that oh, I, we could spend the whole time just on this one scripture because this has been so meaningful to me probably for the last 10, 12 years that <clears throat> when the Lord just started revealing this and just different parts of it to me. Uh, and this is Second Corinthians five seventeen through twenty one. This really, like so many scriptures, just ties, you know, it just seems like from Genesis to Revelation, it all the dots just connect together. And this is one of those scriptures that connects it all together again, too. Because we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So we've just got to understand and get this. And again, seek, uh, sink your teeth into this uh, and just chew on this scripture here. Look at different versions of it. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 21, and this is in the NIV. Therefore, therefore, if anyone is what? In Christ, the new creation has come. So, so that's that redeemed nature that's happened through the cross, the resurrected Christ. Therefore, as anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone. That red line living is gone. The new is here. And all of this is what? From God from God. He's the one that was part of his plan all along, who reconciled us to whom? To himself through the redemption of Jesus Christ, and has given all of us the ministry of reconciliation. We're reconciled, and that's our ministry, is, is to bring reconciliation. We're agents of redemption. We, we did a teaching on We're all agents. We have that license uh, that we go out and get a license. Hey, we're everything. You know, I look at business. Business is about redemption. Things are broken. It's a fallen world. We're here to bring service and redeem things. So God has given us the message of reconciled. We've been reconciled to God. That's a big idea that God was reconciling the entire world, the whole world to himself in Christ. Look at this, not counting people's sins against them. That's a big idea there, because what we've got is the world's culture that's saying, look at your sin. You're not good enough, you know, uh, and just just pointing fingers and, and, and just uh, blame and shame and guilt and condemnation. So and, and he has committed to us the message of recon reconciliation. So here we are. Here's our assignment. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. Just like we have ambassadors to nations, well, we're ambassadors to the world, to, 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 the, to, to the whole earth. We're there for Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal, carry through you and I and everybody listening, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. And this is the scripture that radically, when, when I began getting this, and, then, and I believe it continually reveals more and more. 
as we grasp the understanding here, God made him, Jesus, Jesus Christ, who had no sin to be sin for us. And I love the so that. So, so that in him, in Christ, we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So he took all the sin so that we could become the righteousness. So that just cleaned up that whole culture, the world's culture, because we can walk around now knowing that we've been made righteous. And that's hard to understand. And, and those that are in some of the classes that I teach when I'm in a live class, I have the class stand up and, and I just love asking the question, who are you? Who are you? And we teach that you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And we just speak that. And when you begin speaking that over yourself, I have been made, I am the righteousness of God in, in Christ Jesus. I'm in one class that I was teaching uh, over a, a series of weeks, like 10 weeks. Uh, and we'd probably say that 10, maybe 12 times, just each hour in the class. So over a period of times, we may have said it over a hundred times. Who are you? I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Then finally, a lady just stood up in the class and she says, I get it. I get it. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So this is something you can't get with just your, your mind and your brain and your senses. The Holy Spirit's got to reveal to you because we've been trained so much that the way we enter into into God, into the Father, into our Father, is through works and performance. But when we realize that he who knew no sin became sin so that we could become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, all of a sudden we recognize, and there's such a freedom that we have from sin consciousness. We've been set free from sin consciousness, and now we have lordship. The lordship has begun here on, on, on earth. So here's another, and, and we're going to be going through a lot of scriptures, and, and, and Kara, as we've talked before, uh, this is not an opinion program. We go through scriptures, and what's so neat in, in this week's teaching is you can see the scriptures just tie together, uh, and again, that's, that's what's so neat is, is that they all just kind of come together here. So this, this is Ephesians 4, 21 through 20, uh, 24 in the Passion Translation. If you have really experienced the anointed one, <laughs> that's so neat. If you have really experienced the anointed one and heard his truth, it will be seen where? In your life. For we know that the ultimate, and again, people are looking, they're searching for the reality. You know, again, that they may go into drugs and, and, and just all kinds of things, looking for the ultimate reality. They're seeking this. They're seeking it. For we know that the ultimate re reality is embodied where? In Christ Jesus. That's where it's embodied. And he has taught you to let go, <laughs> let go of the lifestyle of the ancient. That's the world's culture, the old South life. To let go of the lifestyle of the old cultural life, the old South life, which was corrupted by sinful and deceitful desires that spring from, I love this, delusions. It's delusional. We don't have to live in fear and condemnation and worry and anxiety and shame and guilt and, and this, this sin consciousness. No, we've been redeemed from that. So, so it's delusional. Now, it's time to be made new by every revelation. <laughs> so again, is that revelation that's been given to you? And again, that's, that's the word of Jesus. That's the spirit of God. That's the Holy Spirit that's revealing truth to you. By the way, all, all, you know, the, whole, the Holy Spirit's the one teaching here today. Carrie and I are facilitators of that Holy Spirit. So as he's revealing the word of God, which is Jesus to you, uh, it's going to be speaking to you. To make new by every revelation that's been given to you and to be transformed as you embrace the glorious Christ, where? That's within you, as your new life and live in union with him. Now, this is Ephesians 4, 21 through 24. For God has recreated, 
Now, let's think about that. We were a junk car. Now we've been restored uh, or we're an old house. We've been totally restored. And now we have this, this, this castle that we live for God has recreated you all over again in his perfect, look at this, perfect righteousness. Wow, he who knew no sin became sin so that we could become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. God has recreated us over again into his perfect righteousness. And you now, this is a now, not a future, and now you belong to him in the realm of true holiness. Now, that's hard for some to grasp because, oh, I'm not holy. Look at what I've done. We're not holy by what we do. We're holy because of what Jesus Christ did to redeem us. He took all the sin and gave us his righteousness. When that gets in and the Holy Spirit reveals to you your identity of who you are in Christ, the sin consciousness, that fraud fire extinguisher just burns on that and all of a sudden recognizing your, your ultimate reality is embodied in Jesus. And it just, just puts out that sin consciousness, that fear and the guilt and the shame just is covered over there. So here's, here's, here's some other things that I think are just really important here too. And, and this, this is in whom we have our redemption. So, so this, this is a redemption. And th these are good words. This is a redemption from Satan's dominion. So what we're, our victorious life is over Satan's dominion, that culture of the world. Satan has no, look at this, no legal right to reign over the, the man. Uh, who, us, who's accepted Jesus Christ as his savior. That man, look at this, that man, we, we have been delivered out of Satan's dominion, out of Satan's family where we were, where, where, where your father's the devil, uh, out of Satan's family, Satan's authority. And we have, we have been born into the family of God, the kingdom of the son of his love. When this was done, the redemptive work that Christ wrought became a reality. Not only, uh, not, he not only redeems us out of Satan's dominion, that the world's culture, there's also a remission of all the sins. He redeems us, recreates us, he delivers us out of Satan's authority and remits us. Uh, we have, uh, er, er, it's all done. So, and again, this scripture is another one of those scriptures just ties all, all the dots, all the dots, every, it connects everything together uh, to recognize this because it's so deep. It's almost like every word has special meaning to us because we get this, it begins tying in the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus of knowing who Christ is, we'll know who we really are. And, and again, just Christ's resurrection is my resurrection. This is your resurrection too. Christ's resurrection is your resurrection too. This is why I, I per, love personalized. This is why I yearn. That's why you yearn for all that is from above because that's where Christ sits enthroned at the place of all power, honor, and authority. And who's sitting with Christ? We are. We're sitting with him in the heavenly now. That's where Christ sits enthroned in the place of all power, honor, and authority. So our, our spirit life is there now. Heaven's open. Yes, so we feast on all the treasures of the heavenly realm and fill our thoughts with heavenly realities. And what we end up doing is filling our thoughts with the world's, the, the, the world's cultural things rather than the heavenly realities, the real reality of, of who Christ is and what God has done in loving us so much that he's redeemed us and made and given us the righteousness and made us holy now. And so... So fill your thoughts with heavenly realities, not with the distractions of this natural realm. And Carrie, yours and mine, everybody, you, our crucifixion with Christ has done what? Severed the tie with this world, the world's culture. When we recognize we are crucified with Christ, we no longer live, but Christ lives inside of us. We recognize that our crucifixion with Christ has severed the tie with this world to this life. And now my life, our life is hidden away in God, in Christ Jesus. The divine nature of God is living in us now. And as Christ himself is seen, that this is so powerful. As Christ is seen, 
as Christ is seen for who he really is, who I really am will also be revealed. So as I see Christ for who he really is and what he did and what he redeemed and what he went through to redeem mankind and how he received God's love and he was obedient to, and faithful to redeem mankind. Uh, what a love letter that is to redeem us and to give us the authority to rule and reign here on earth now. And as Christ is seen for who he really is, who we really are, will we grow? For what? Here it is. This speaks to us. This just ties everything up. For you, Glenn, Carrie, all of us, you are now one with him in his glory. This is a now. This isn't a future. This is a now. This happened 2,000 years ago. It was predicted and prophesied, you know, three and 4,000 years before that. This is a now. We're living in a now faith, trusting God and receiving his glory and walking in that, in that glory now. So, in carrying this on over into John 20, verses 21 and 22, uh, what, we, what we read, and, and this is so important that we, we get this because Jesus is speaking to us here. Jesus repeated his greeting, peace to you. And he told them, just as the Father has sent me, I'm sending you. That's to all of us. Then taking a deep breath, he blew on them and said, receive, receive the Holy Spirit. So in the footnotes here, it reads, the Greek word used here does not appear elsewhere in the New Testament. However, it's the same word found in the Septuagint uh, for when God breathed into God, Adam's nostrils, the breath of life. The beginning, uh, here it is, the beginning of new creation life came from the breath of Jesus. And in the mighty wind of Acts 2, uh, and, 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 and that's when the people uh, received the Holy Spirit, uh, was, was the power of the breath of Jesus breathed into his disciples in this verse was, was for life. This, so he breathed, he's breathed life into us. When we receive that life, we begin understanding the Lordship has begun. The, he's given us the Lordship now over the earth through his sons and daughters. So our faith in Jesus Christ, and, and this is at Romans 5 verses 1 through 5. And again, all we're doing here is reading scripture. We're, we're going through scripture here. And, our, our, and again, moving out of that kingdom of darkness and, and the world's culture and understanding our identity of who we are and what God, how much God loves us and has redeemed us through, through the blood of Jesus Christ. Our faith in Jesus transfers, look at this, God's righteousness to us. It seems like the theme is continually here. Our faith in Christ Jesus transfers God's righteousness to us. And he now declares us, how does he declare us? Flawless in his eyes. This means we can now enjoy true and lasting peace with God. Again, what does that do to anxiety and worry and fear and condemnation and guilt and shame? So we can rest in peace knowing he declares us flawless with uh, in, in, in lasting peace with God, all because of what our Lord Jesus did, the anointed one has done for us. Oh, that's powerful. Our faith guarantees us, look at this, permanent permanent access into the marvelous kindness that was given us a perfect relationship with God. We can enter into God's presence now. We don't have to die. We can enter in now. What an incredibly joy bursts forth within us when we, when we keep on celebrating our hope of experiencing God's glory. Oh, let's just stop there. I remember just reading this in preparation. I go, wow, this is powerful. What an incredible joy bursts forth within us when we keep on celebrating our hope of experiencing God's glory. When? Now. Now. But that's, but that's not all. That's not all. Even in times of trouble, which we see all around us, we have a joyful confidence knowing that our pressures 
will develop us patient endurance. And patient endurance will refine our character and proven character leads us back to hope. And this hope is not a disappointing fantasy fantasy because we know now experience the endless. This is that, that continuing growing and revealing the endless love of God cascading into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who lives inside of us. Boy, these scriptures just tie all together. They just tie all together because we now experience the endless love. And that's that growing manifestation and understanding that progressive love as we can understand who Christ is, we'll understand and reveal who we really are. And that's, that's understanding his love because God is love and that love enters in and lives inside of us as we understand how to love as God has loved us, then we can love others and see others the way God has seen us in the whole world. No, I was just going to say, you can see the pattern that emerges here because overall, as you're teaching this, what we see is we see that uh, the the very nature of moving from that red line living to that green line and accepting who who Christ has created us to be on the kingdom living side, you know, it really is the, the answer to it is just what you're saying about is like you're moving in that spirit of love, which is where God has us anyway. It's fantastic, Glenn. Well, and again, uh, Carrie, th this is, we're, we're reading the word of God here. Uh, and, and again, so much of this is hidden, but we have to be seeking it. And as we seek it, we'll find it. We seek it with all of our hearts. It's right here. So as, as we see the picture, God's righteousness to us, he's revealing his righteousness to us. And so this free flowing gift imparts to us much more, much more than what was given to us through, look at this, this rev, okay, this free-flowing gift of righteousness, the gift of, of entering into God's presence and defeating uh, the, the culture of this world imparts to us much more than what was given to us through the one man who sinned. For because of one transgression, we're all facing a death sentence with the verdict of what? Guilty. That's that sin consciousness. Oh, let that just sink in. So we carry that guilty inside of us. And guess what that does? That guilty self, self a sin consciousness just eats away at the soul and, and the worry and the anxiety. And guess what that does to the body? It causes sickness and disease and death. For because of one scourge, we're facing a death sentence with a verdict of guilty. But here's a but, but. But this gracious gift leaves us free from our many failures and brings us into what? The perfect righteousness of God, acquitted with the words, carry, not guilty, not guilty. We're free. We're freed from the culture of this world. We're freed from the shame and the guilt and the sin consciousness. Death once held us in its grip, and by the blunder, that red line again, by the blunder of one man, one man, death reigned as king over humanity. So that's what that's what we see out there in the world's culture, is we see the, the, the death reigning as a king over humanity. But now, but now, how much more are we held in the grip of grace? And we can understand grace, the grace that God has given us, and continue reigning as kings in life when? Now, enjoying our regal freedom through the gift of perfect righteousness in the one and only Jesus, the Messiah. Come on, this is such great victorious news now that we get this now. This is a now message. In other words, just as condemnation came upon all people through one transgression, Adam, so through the one righteous act of Jesus' sacrifice, what happened? The perfect righteousness that makes us right with God and leads us where? To a victorious life is now available to all. Oh, that is so powerful. Let me just read that again, because that, that just, this is Romans 5, 16 through 18 in the page. In other words, just as condemnation, that sin consciousness came in 
upon all people through through the one trans transgression eating don't eat from that tree of good and evil with you do you'll 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 die so the communists came to all people one transgression so through one one righteous act jesus is sacrificed the perfect he who knew no sin became sin carries so that we can become the righteousness of god in christ so the perfect righteousness that makes us right with God. We can stand before God, not because of our performance, not because of our past or anything. It's because of what Jesus Christ did and we've been made and declared not guilty with God and leads us to a victorious life now that is available now to all, to all, to all. So it's hearing this. This is hidden from that veil of the people that, 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 that the enemy just covered their eyes and they can't hear this. This is easy stuff. This is clear. This is clear. This is the perfect gift of righteousness that comes. And this is the union of love. This is the God that loves us so much. So the question here is, who is victorious over the world? Who are the world conquerors? And we talked about this before we came on, Carrie, and you just got this totally right. So who is victorious over the world? Who are the world conquerors? So let's, let's look at the scripture here. For whatever is born of God is victorious over the world. And this victory, and this victory that conquers the world even our faith. So who is, who is it that is victorious over, over that conquers the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the son of God, who adheres to and trusts in and relies on that fact. So, so let's, let's go through this. For, for, who, for, whatever is, for whatever is born of God is victorious. Are we born of God? Are we born of God? Yeah. Yeah, we have the same seed that was planted in, in Mary, the same seed, the same word that was planted in Jesus is in a, let it be unto me according to your words, what Mary said. And as we receive the seed of the divine nature of God through the Holy Spirit living in us, we're born of God, is victorious over what? The culture of this world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, even our faith. <clears throat> what is it that is victorious over? that conquers the world, but he who believes that Jesus is the son of God, who adheres to trust in and relies on that fact. And then we read it also uh, in, uh, in 1 John 5, and this is verse 1 through 5. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Messiah is God's spiritual child as in, and has been fathered by God himself. And everyone who loves Father God loves his children as well. So again, there's that love that's coming through us because God is love. We have the divine nature of God living in us. So we learn how to love even those that don't love us. So Father God loves his children as well. This is how we can be sure that we love the children of God, by having a passionate love for God and by obedience to his commands. His command is to love others. True love for God means obeying his commands, and his commands don't weigh us down as heavy burdens. You see, every child of God overcomes the culture of this world, the satanic rule, uh, the demonic rule, the, the antichrist rule that we talked about with that long list of, of sickness and disease and fear and worry and anxiety. The culture, the, the culture of this world. For our faith is the victorious power that triumphs over the culture, antichrist culture of this world. So who are the world conquerors defeating the, its power? Those who believe that Jesus is the son of God. So this is how we know we've experienced God's love. And we know that we have power and dominion. We, we, have, we have the victory in this world now. We have that victory. Our light is shining bright and darkness doesn't light like light. It hides from light. And so with that, that light is shining out the radiance of God's love to the world. 
And, and with that, we bring the message as ambassadors to the kingdom, the, this earth, the message of reconciliation to people. That's what they're looking for. They've been hiding in religion. They've been hiding in a lot of different places. But what we want to do is bring the kingdom of God to the world. So, so yet even in the midst of all these things, we triumph over them all. For God has made us to be more than conquerors, and his, dem and his demonstrated love is our glorious victory over what? Everything. Over everything. And this is Romans 8, 37 through 39. So he's given us victory over what? Everything. So now I live the confidence that there is nothing, nothing, nothing in the universe with the power to separate us, me and you, from God's love. There's nothing. This world's culture of antichrist, of, of fear and worry and anxiety and sickness and disease and filled with death, nothing can separate us from God's love. I'm convinced that his love will triumph over what? Death, life's troubles, fallen angels, our dark rulers in heavens. Triumphs over everything. There is nothing, there's nothing in our present and future circumstances that can weaken his love. There is no power above us or beneath us, no power that could ever be found in the universe that can distance us from God's passionate love, which is lavished on us through our Lord Jesus Christ, the anointed one. Wow. Isn't that powerful? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. So what we, see, what we see here is God's perfect righteousness. We see his perfect righteousness. This gospel that we're talking about unveils a continual revelation of God's righteousness, a perfect righteousness. This is Romans 1 verse 17 in the Passion. A perfect righteousness given us, us when we believe. It moves us from receiving life through faith to the power of living by faith. That is what the scripture means when it says we are right with God through life-giving faith. And in, in John 1, 9, is the perfect light of truth is coming, is coming into the world and shine upon, uh, and it will shine upon everyone. Uh, Carrie, th th this is amazing, amazing, an amazing word for us uh, that we have, we have, he who knew no sin became sin so we could become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And what we have is this, this, this powerful, spirit, this, this enemy of antichrist that's, a, that's not naming Christ as Lord, the Lordship uh, of Christ, and that enemy of fear and doubt and worry and anxiety, that, that spirit. But guess what? He's overcome that. We have authority over that ourselves. And so we are above that, and we can defeat that, and we can speak into that and against that in other people's lives, and especially in our own lives, because we have to speak I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am the righteousness. And we need to speak that and know our identity of, of who we are in Christ. Yeah, you know, Glenn, as you talk as you talk through that, that's really that's really the crux of the matter anyway, is is acknowledging and understanding and gaining that acceptance of who Christ sees us to be uh, and has redeemed us to be. And so when we talk about kingdom living, Glenn, I think that's the biggest challenge is to get people to move off of that kind of that carnal red line way of seeing the, the world and viewing us the way the Bible says and explains to us the word of God says that we're that that he views us. And that's why uh, as as you go through this, uh, we do this at the end of each of our messages where you talk about the believer's declaration of legal rights, because Glenn, in some of the some of the broadcasts that we've done on Kingdom Living, where we've talked about uh, new citizenship and things like that, it's important that we understand that not only uh, does it create a, a a level of power and authority here on this earth, but it also comes complete with these benefits. And and so as you carry a passport, you know, for the country that you live in, there are certain rights and things that and privileges that accrue to you because of that passport. 
But here again, we're talking about the ultimate passport. It's the kingdom living passport, Glenn. That is so good. You're, you're, you're right. We have those rights and privileges. Yeah. In the enemy, the Antichrist is trying to tell us what passport we're supposed to have, which, which is a, a, the culture of this world, which is death and sickness and disease and, and blame and shame and guilt and the sin consciousness, being conscious of sin versus what you talk about, the passport of our identity in the kingdom of God as sons in the kingdom and loved by our father. No, my father can't love me. That's what the enemy, the Antichrist, is trying to teach us, is that I'm not righteous. I can't be righteous. Look, look at all the shame and guilt. Look at this. Look at my past here. But God's redeemed us, and he said, not guilty. These scriptures that we went through, and those listening, go back through this again. Look up these scriptures. Meditate on these scriptures, because uh, they're there. Look at different versions uh, of the Bible, and just meditate. Eat on these things, because they just connect all together. It's amazing just preparing how all of this connects. And again, carry how our teachings in the past, they all just kind of connect together. They just flow together because this is the word of God from Genesis to Revelation. Uh, it is that victorious life. It's not the sin consciousness. It's not the condemnation message that many times being taught out there. There's our freedom is from sin consciousness into saying we're not guilty through the blood of Jesus. We've been set free. And boy, what a mess. What that does is brings healing to our soul and to our body. And, and just we see a refreshment of the divine nature of God living inside of us. So well said, Glenn. And by the way, if you'd like your own copy of Believer's Declaration of Legal Rights, uh, we make this available to you absolutely free. Uh, you just uh, will we'll, uh, click on the link that uh, you're seeing on the screen and, and follow that because then you can get a version that you could, uh, a little certificate that you can download. I suggest you print it out, maybe put it uh, on the wall next to your desk or, you know, just someplace where you're going to see it regularly because it always helps to remind yourself of, of how Christ sees us. And so why not avail for that? You know, Glenn, I, I think it's, I think it's so, so important uh, to kind of quench those fiery darts that we run into in the red line system uh, as we navigate about. Let's, let's walk in the vic victory, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, and Kerry, one of the things just even today, I, I had to wait in a dentist's office and, and I, I, I pulled out my phone and, and just, and I have identified, oh, I, I don't know, I've got 100 or 200 IMs. And again, yeah. in, the, in the back uh, of, of the book, Fraud, uh, there's, I think, four or five pages of a single space IMs. And I just want to encourage uh, those that are, are watching and listening is write down your IMs. Who are you? And just write down uh, them. And so you can recognize it. And just what when we start recognizing, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. That's what I'm a child of God. I'm a citizen in the kingdom of God. We, you know, my father loves me. Uh, it's just so important that we recognize these things. And, and the list goes on, write them down, write them down. So, you know, and then, you know, if you're in a period of time that uh, you're going through some anxiety or worry or whatever, you go back to that so you're not feeding on the sin consciousness of, of the i am not tree you're <clears throat> you're eating through that tree of the i am tree uh that you've been drinking and that's the tree of life because that's how god designed you that, that's why this is so important because we need those constant uh reaffirmations and so you're right in the back of the fraud book uh Glenn, like you said, you can get your copy, by the way, if you visit therepleminute.com. It's it's not, it's a very easy to digest, very simple 40 bite-size uh, chapters. They're a couple of minutes long each as you look through them. And what's wonderful is this book, Glenn, is really a great, a great series if you're going to do like a little Bible study, either yourself or maybe with some, some friends or, or family members. And I think it's important to set the stage. And Glenn, there's all kinds of uh, tools and resources available absolutely free of charge on the repleminute.com. You can access the daily Monday through Friday Repl Minute, which kind of started this all along. You've been doing that uh, since 2006, a daily biblical motivation Monday through Friday piece. It's really a great way uh, to launch your day. You can have it de delivered directly into your inbox or you can access it on the website daily. You can uh, also... Uh, pick up more information about the fraud series and really get that 
understanding and revelation for yourself. And, and then, Glenn, too, there's all the Kingdom Living uh, podcasts that, uh, that, that we've been working on together over a number of years, and each one builds on the other. So if you've missed something, or especially if you kind of just scroll through there, you may find some topic titles that will really have great meaning and, and speak life changes into you. So I want to encourage you to take a look at the repelminute.com. And of course, uh, if this message impacts you, by all means, please like and share this out. If you're seeing us on the YouTube, please subscribe to the channel. That way you'll be up to speed whenever new uh uh, podcasts are coming your way or new material is added. And uh, by all means, Glenn, before we before we wrap up today, I want to ask that you pray, you know, we were just talking at the beginning of the show, it's approaching, uh, it's approaching a million people uh, that this, uh, this broadcast is impacting, uh, literally on a quarterly basis. And, and uh, while it really isn't about the numbers per se, it is about reaching people one at a time with this good message. And so I would like to ask you to close the broadcast, Glenn, by praying for everyone within the sound of our voices. And again, if this is having impact, please share this uh, with folks who are like-minded because it's going gonna, it's gonna to be helpful all the way around. You know, in in Carrie, one of the things, and I learned this years ago, and that's a part of the reason in, in the book, it it, uh, it, it says uh, write down the date that you started the book, wow. uh, and and then the date that you finish it, uh, and then scribble in it, write down questions, what, and then go give it away. But one of the things I'd encourage you to do is buy two copies or three mm -hmm. or four, and then start a little small group, and and because these are forty. Uh, 40 days, 40 little tiny chapters you can go through. And so you walk through this with different people, with, with a group, and they just come together and say, what, what'd you get out of this and talk about it? And so what you've done is you're just really building a community of believers. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's just so, so important that, uh, uh, that you are with like-minded people that are hungry for the word of God, you're growing uh, in the word of God. So just what, 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 what an honor it is to, to, to be, to be, uh, uh, being a part of this. So let me just close out with the believer's declaration. Let's read yeah. that. Close, close out with prayer. Uh, so let's, we're, we're, I'm going to read this out loud, receive this as, 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 as we go through. And those that are watching here, I am a special race as a child of God, <laughs> as a citizen in the kingdom of God, in the body of Christ, in a kingdom of priests. I belong, I belong to the family of God. I can enter into God's presence boldly. How? Now I have been recreated into God's image and likeness of love. I manifest and experience heaven on earth now with righteousness, peace, and joy. I am restored, redeemed, and recreated back with God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit living in me now. I have the word of God dwelling in me. I have the crown of righteousness on my head and wear the garment of praise, which is the robe of righteousness. I have the legal, here's these legal rights and privileges use the name of Jesus. I have legal authority as a believer over the principalities, powers, and rulers of the kingdom of darkness. We have that power. That's what we learned about today. I have through the Holy Spirit living in me, the resurrection power to cast out demons and to lay hands on the sick and they are healed. See, that's what we have. That's what we have now. That's the power. That's the power. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We just thank you for your love, your love that shines and radiates. So you're, you loved us so much. You sent your son, and he's resurrected, gave his life that we could have life. We have that life living inside of us through, through the Holy Spirit now. Father, just thank you for everybody that's listening and hearing and watching today. Father, we just pray blessing, Father, that your word penetrates their heart and brings healing, healing, healing to their soul, to their mind, to their hearts, to their will, that they become alive to your word. They hear your word speaking to their hearts, and that brings healing to their physical parts of their body, to their heart, to their ears, to their nose, to their throat, to their lungs, to their liver, to the pain that's going on. That pain does not belong in there because Christ took all the stripes, took all of it on the cross. He said, it is finished. He's given you through the blood of Jesus, his blood. You have the divine nature, his blood living inside of you now. 
and that healing, that healing is happening. Your eyesight is getting better. Your hearing is getting better. And Father, we just thank you. We just thank you for what you're doing. And to your glory, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. And so again, listener, thank you for joining us today. And thank you, Glenn, for sharing this. Again, the, the website that you want to jot down, the repelminute.com. Like and share. And thank you again. Uh, we hope you have a good, good season until the next episode of Kingdom Living. We'll see you again soon. Thank you, Glenn. God bless you.